Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Sydney. I film cruelty-free beauty videos three times a week. And today's video is going to be all about the brand Beauty Bakery. This is an indie brand um, that I have been wanting to try for quite a while. They have the cutest packaging. I love their little marketing uh, campaigns. I think it's so cute and so well thought out. Um, and a couple weeks ago, I was lucky enough to win a giveaway from a Beauty Bakery. So I have quite a few products from them to test out. And I did create this full face, well, almost full face, using Beauty bakery products so you guys can see them in action and towards the end i'll give you guys kind of my first impressions on these products make sure to stay tuned to see how i feel about these products in a couple weeks and i'm sure i'll do some kind of update video or post on my instagram and without further ado let's hop into this video per usual we're going to start with a little bit of eye primer and today i want to use my essence eye heart color intensifying eye base i'm just going to apply this all over my lid and then i'm going to just take a sponge and start tapping it out this sponge is from I think it's from AOA Studio and it's the Mochi Wonder Blender, I think, Wonder Sponge, something like that. And now I honestly don't even know if there's a shade light enough in this palette. I should probably tell you which palette we're going to use to begin with. Um, and that is the Do It For The Gram palette from Beauty Bakery. Here is what she looks like. So pretty, huh? So this one looks a little bit deep to set down my eye primer, so I'm just going to go in with my Pan That palette for this year, which is my e.l.f. Matte for Matte 2, and I'm just going to sweep the lightest shade all over my lid really gently with a fluffy brush just to set down the eye primer a little bit. I really don't like to test eyeshadow palettes out for the first time with an unset base because I feel like if there's blending issues, um... It's harder to tell whether that's the shadow or the way that I applied the shadow or because of the wet base. So I just like to set it down when I'm doing a first impressions on an eyeshadow. So I don't know if I said this in the intro because I haven't filmed it yet, but not all of this is going to be a first impression. I did bust into a couple things because I was just so excited I couldn't wait, um, but a couple things will be. So this eyeshadow palette is one of the things I'm testing out for the first time. I have swatched this. And I'm pretty darn excited based on the swatches. So let's start building our eye look up. I think I want to go in with this light, this slightly like off-white, lightly beige shadow. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and I'm going to take this on this brush from Wet n Wild. It's just a crease brush. It was from their holiday collection last year. And I'm going to start sweeping this through my crease kind of as a transition shade. Oh, maybe I could have used this to shut my eyeshadow down because this is... Not really doing much in the crease for me. All right, so plan B, we're gonna dip into the shade right next door, which is just kind of a nice medium warm brown shade. And I'm just gonna take that on the same exact brush and I'm gonna use this kind of as a transition shade. Per usual, I'm gonna wing it out, you guys. You guys know I've been totally obsessed with that lately. This is coming off very softly on the eyes. I'm kind of digging my brush in there. Oh, there we go, now we're getting some pigment. Maybe these are just harder pressed shadows. I'm so used to shadows being so like lightly pressed that I just like barely dip my brush into it and I expect it to be crazy full pigment, but not all shadows are like that. And this one may perform better if I use maybe a slightly denser brush. So maybe that's what we'll go in with next. I feel like it's weirdly clinging right there. So I wonder if I had some unset eyeshadow primer over there. I'm just gonna take my sponge and kind of rub it out for lack of a better term. And now I think I'm gonna go in with, let's go in with this brush. This is from AOA Studio. It's the E130 brush. And I'm just gonna go back into that same exact shade. This one's a little more densely packed. So we'll see if I get more pigment this way. Yeah, I think I'm getting a little more pigment this way. I just, I don't know if it's applying quite as deep as what it looks like in the pan, which I feel like is kind of, the opposite of what I expected because usually, I believe Beauty Bakery is owned by a woman of color, um, taking just a bare fluffy brush and just blending. And I feel like the women of color brands that I've tried before have been crazy out of this world pigmented. And I'm just thinking, not that they don't serve customers of all skin types, but in skin tones, but I just, I'm not sure how this would work on someone of a deeper skin tone. Like, I was just expecting more from that shade, but that's okay. We're gonna move next into this kind of deep reddish shade right here. And I'm gonna take this on this brush from BH Cosmetics. This one is a number six brush. It's from their Rose Quartz collection. And I'm just gonna load this up kind of on the side, a little bit on the tip of my brush. And we're going to start blending. We're gonna start in our outer corner. 
Um, and then I'm gonna keep it kind of low in my crease, blending back and forth with windshield wiper motions. And I am, of course, going to bring it out into that kind of winged shape. I mean, I'm getting pigment. It's just really not as much pigment as I was anticipating. So I'm just going to take a little bit more. There we go. Maybe it just needed an extra layer. That is more of what I had in mind. So next, I want to take this deepest brown shade right here in the palette, and I'm going to take this on a BH Cosmetics Studio Pro number 6 brush. We're not really going for a super complicated look today, just because I have quite a few products to try out on camera, so I don't want this video to be too, too long. Um, and also, I just, I feel like the colors that are in this palette don't quite be lend themselves to be something super duper complicated. Usually when I do a little bit more of an intricate look, I tend to go in with more mattes than shimmers, and this palette is predominantly shimmery. Yeah, kind of same thing with this brown. It's not not pigmented, it's not not workable, it's just not quite as pigmented as I was anticipating, which isn't a bad that fact would make this a really great everyday palette for me. I really don't like these shadows that I reach for every day to be so pigmented that I'm like afraid to stick my brush in there and get too much product. So I'm just kind of placing this in the outer corner, blending it into that outer wing. I'm not trying to get it up in the crease, although I feel like I did on that eye. So now I have to on this eye a little bit more to even it out. And don't worry if your little outer wings are messy. We're going to clean those up. I feel like this wing is so much cleaner than this one. This one I just like went like that and got a little crazy. So now I'm just going to take that bare fluffy brush once again. And I just want to blend the edges just a little bit more. I'm going to dip into this lighter shade. And I'm just going to use that to buff this outer corner a little bit. I feel like we lost a little bit of the depth that way. So I'm going to go... Back in with that deep brown shade on the same brush. Just re-intensify that outer corner. And then I'm gonna go back in with that same BH Cosmetics brush that we used the red shade in with, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit more, not a lot, um, but I just want to kind of re-warm up the edges of our crease. So I'm gonna go just a little bit above my crease and kind of above where we started that wing because I do want this kind of warmth to be apparent when my eyes are open and since my eyes are a little bit hooded I have to blend a little bit differently be a little bit more intentional with my blending is a better way to say that you guys I just I don't know I feel like the outer corners are not deep enough so I'm gonna go back in with this brown shade once again try to intensify things a little bit because I'm gonna put still kind of a relatively dark shade on the lid i wanted to have still some kind of contrast and depth in the outer corner i didn't want it to be like the same tone the whole way across all right we're gonna leave it like that for right now and i'm actually going to half cut my crease or no you know what we're just gonna use glitter glue my camera took a little spill, but everything is all good now. So I'm gonna go in with my NYX glitter glue and we're going to kind of create the half cut crease shape, but we're not gonna carve it out with concealer or anything. And I'm not only doing this to intensify the shadow a little bit, but I also want to do it because the way that my eyes are shaped, anything that I put on my lid right here instantly gets transferred up into my crease and I really don't want that to happen. I want there to be a distinction with this look. So I'm doing it mostly for that purpose, but I can apply a little bit on the other eye without glitter glue so we can see how it performs. So I'm just going to start tapping this on my lid, kind of in the shape that I would do a cut crease with. And then I'm going to dip back into the palette and I'm going to dip into this green shade right here, which is so special and magical, you guys. It looks like an emerald in the pan, but it has the most beautiful shift in it. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. There are two duochromes in this palette that like as soon as I swatched them, I was like dying over. I'm like, yeah, those are the first ones that I'm gonna use. I'm just patting this on the lid. I feel like the shimmers are definitely performing better than the mattes in my opinion. So now I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more, tap off the excess, and then we're gonna start kind of pressing and blending inward. So just to be sure that these are still good quality without the glitter glue, I'm going to go in on my other eye and do just a little bit without the glitter glue and then I'll pat it on top. So this is like a dry brush with no glitter glue. Oh, I feel the fallout though. Holy fallout, Batman. I feel like that looks just as pigmented and foiled on that eye as it does on this eye with the glitter glue. So I think these shimmers may be the better formula out of this palette. 
So now that I've added that gorgeous emerald all over the lid, I'm going to go back in with the brown one more time and try to deepen up those outer corners because right now the lid is darker than the outer corners and that's just really not my makeup style. I don't think it flatters my eye shape quite as much. So we're just going to take the same brush we did last time, the BH Cosmetics one, and just kind of blend directly over it in the outer corner. Mm, not sure if I love that. I feel like this is as built up as we're going to get it and that's kind of frustrating to me and I feel like it would be frustrating to especially anyone with a deeper skin tone than me who's trying to create some depth with the look especially because this palette has a lot of really deep beautiful jewel tones and it's just hard to create any depth with that brown in there and I feel like I'm really digging into the pan trying to pick up pigment so that brown is definitely not as pigmented or as rich as I would like it to be but it's what we're working with today so you know what, maybe we'll place something like in the center of the lid that's a little bit brighter I'm thinking we should go in with the copper because maybe that'll play with kind of the warm brown duochrome that the green has so i'm just going to take that one on my ring finger and that's this shade right here i'm just going to grab it on my ring finger and i'm just going to tap it in the center of my lid right where the green and that deep brown meet yeah we're going to go in with the more orangey copper we're going to go with this shade because i did not like how that other one sat on the lid so let's put that one kind of right here Lord, you guys, I feel like this is turning into a hot mess video. Don't love what that's doing. Um, let's go in with that brush that we used the dark brown on. Just with no additional product, run over where we placed that coppery shade. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to use my finger once again. The green. Wait, look at how gorgeous that green is. I just cannot get over it. I'm just going to pat that where the bronze overlaps to help blend it a little bit. I feel like that's a little bit better. I don't know, you guys. I'm going to hop off camera, fix the edges of my eyeshadow, clean them up a little bit, put on foundation, concealer, and then we'll come back for the next product. Alright, so foundation and concealer are done. So now we're on to the next product that I got from Beauty Bakery. And that is their flour baking powder. I've been hearing about this for so very long. And how adorable is this packaging, you guys? It came in like a little sack of flour bag. Isn't that so cute? They win for packaging. There's another thing that I'm going to talk about in just a minute that is so stinking cute that I can't even handle it. So let's try using a little bit of this powder to set my under eyes. Lately, I've been into using a sponge to set my under eyes, but I don't wet it. I just use it dry. So I'm going to dump a little bit of this into the cap. I don't want to use very much. And I'm just going to take my little Real Techniques sponge just gonna load a bit of the product up on there I like to stamp off a little bit of the excess on my hand or on my wrist before I go in and I'm just going to pat out my concealer then we're gonna go in with this powder upon first impression without applying any setting spray of any kind I think that I prefer my essence all about matte setting powder that one's a pressed powder but I use it in this manner and I really do like the way that it looks I think this one looks I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to tell a little bit dry in my under eyes and in the camera it looks like it's oxidizing my under eye concealer in person it doesn't look too bad looks like it's a little bit darker but nothing too crazy the shade that I got is Oat, which I believe is translucent, so it shouldn't be changing the color. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of that, go in the smile lines, because those pop through if I don't set them. And then I think we'll use this powder to set the rest of my face, but I'm going to use a fluffier brush for that because I don't need quite as concentrated of an application. The concealer that I use, by the way, is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Concealer. This has been my absolute favorite lately. It's been like the only one that I've been using. To set my face, I'm going to use this brush from BH Cosmetics. It's the number two brush from their Rose Quartz coll co collection. And I'm just going to swirl this around in the cap, tap off the excess, and just start kind of stippling it onto the skin. I just want this to set my foundation down. It doesn't need to be crazy heavy crazy mattifying i just don't want my foundation to be tacky for the things that we're going to blend over top of it in a minute all right let's see how it's faring on the rest of my skin i think it looks pretty good it looks very lightweight i can't really see any powderiness on my skin we'll see how everything blends over over top of it i'm just not 100 percent convinced i love it on my under eyes but this could be a powder that does function better wet i just haven't been using that technique a whole lot lately I wanted to try it 
the way that I've been doing it lately. So let's finish off the lower lash line really quick. I'm gonna start by kind of defining the lower lash line a little bit more. So I'm gonna dip into that not so deep brown and I'm gonna take this on a flat definer brush. This one's from ColourPop, it's the E11. And I'm gonna start by working this against my lower lash line. I'm kind of connecting this up to where our outer corner wing shadow thing is. I'm bringing the brown about two thirds of the way in. Not a big fan of what this powder is doing for my under eyes. I feel like those creases that I have right there are just so much more apparent with this than they are with my essence powder. But like I said, this could function way better if I use it with a damp sponge. Then I'm just gonna take the brush that we used that red shade on from BH Cosmetics and I'm just going to pinch it a little bit. And I'm gonna run this under my lower lash line to kind of blend that out a bit. And since this palette really doesn't have any highlighty shades for me, I'm just gonna dip into my Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe and I'm gonna dip into that champagne shade right there, tap off the excess and apply it to my brow bone as well as the inner corner. So I added about 100 coats of mascara, so it's gonna take a minute to dry. So I thought while that was drying, we could do a little wrap up on the other products. So let's start with the eyeshadow palette, do it for the gram. Upon my first impression, don't hate this palette, but I also don't love it. I definitely need to test this out a little bit more, maybe test it on a wet base, see if that gives these shadows a little more oomph, test out some of the other shadows. As far as my first impressions go, I don't think it's a bad palette, but I don't think it's a great palette. It's definitely not one that I'm saying, oh, you need to run out and buy this right now. I hardly ever say that. I do think it has a pretty color story. I like this selection of mattes. I just wish this deep brown right here was a little bit darker, um, but I do think these shimmers perform well, and I think I will use it again. I'm just not overly excited about it, so, that's where I'm at with this one right now. Next, let's talk about the Flower Setting Powder. Again, not overly impressed, impressed with this the way that I used it. Let me look at my under eyes. This is pre-setting, of course. I just feel like they look a little bit more liney than they usually do, I'm, so I'm not a huge fan of using it on my under eyes. I think my skin, everywhere else where I set it, I think it looks good. I think it did a nice job of setting my foundation without looking too heavy or cakey. So next we're going to talk about the lovely little blush lighter palette. I really like this, you guys. I definitely need to play around with it a little bit more um, and kind of figure out which shades I like best, the best way to apply it, but I do really like this and this is probably my favorite thing that I've tried today, unless that setting spray is like out of this world amazing. So I think I'm done letting my mascara dry and by that I just mean that I'm impatient and I want to finish this video. But look at how cute this packaging is you guys. It looks like a little fridge and then you open it and it's right there. So they also sent along their Always Spray Your Grace. I think it's called Baking Spray. Um, I believe based off of the description, I think this is supposed to be more of a long wearing setting spray rather than like a dewy setting spray. And if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I like to start with a dewy setting spray and then I go with more long wearing setting spray. But for the sake of just testing this out today, we're just gonna use this one. And this one is an aerosol. I believe it has a little aerosol top and it says shake before use. So I'm gonna shake this up. I've never tried an aerosol setting spray, so I'm excited. We'll just, here, let's do a little test spray. Oh yeah, oh, oh, that's not that bad, okay. Ooh, okay, fine mist, but I feel like it kind of smells like alcohol and I feel like, I'm pretty sure alcohol, yeah, alcohol is the second ingredient. So I feel like this is definitely more a long lasting setting spray and one that could potentially be a little bit drying, but I feel like it did a pretty good job of setting my makeup. I don't know, we'll have to see. I'm excited to test this one kind of in more of a long wearing standpoint because I'm not gonna keep this makeup on all day. I started filming at like four o'clock, um, but I do think that it did a pretty good job of setting my makeup. I'm really excited to test this out some more. So that's gonna wrap up this video, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed kind of seeing me test out Beauty Bakery for the first time. It's definitely a brand that I've been intrigued about for quite a while, so I'm glad I got to test some of these products. Make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned to see if any of these products end up in my favorites video or some other kind of makeup favorites roundup. I'll be sure to share my thoughts with you guys in some way, shape, or form about how I feel about these products once I've gotten a little bit more of a chance to test them out. But that's going to wrap today's video up. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!